former Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Muhammad Datijo, has called for the reduction of the powers of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN. He linked the negative perception of the judiciary to the appointment of judicial officers, claiming that appointments have been polluted by political, selfish, and sectional interests. He added that the oversight functions of these bodies should not rest on an individual alone, stating that a person with absolute powers corrupts easily and absolutely. Justice Datijo made the call at his only dictatorial record session held to mark his retirement from the APES court bench, having attained the statutory retirement age of 70 years. Joining me to discuss this is Barista Evans Ufeli, constitutional lawyer. Barista Ufeli, thank you for Good evening. This. Thank you. Good evening, for sir. Pleasure is on mine. We really want to thank you. Uh, Barista Ufeli, what is your take of uh, the, the speech and the inherent salvos in the speech of uh, the retirement speech of? Uh, of uh, Datijo Muhammad, uh, Justice of the Supreme Court. Yeah, we have justice now. Um, the, the speech is one that um, came at a very timely hour. Uh, what was said is actually the practical truth in the matter of our affairs. The CJN is the head of the judiciary, not just the head of the judiciary, is the head of the NJC, is the head of the, the Federal Judicial Commission, is the head of the, the Judicial Privilege Committee uh, that confers the uh, title of the senior record of life. In fact, in the judiciary, the CJN is the head of every institution in the judiciary, except the Ministry of Justice. Where you have the attorney general intervention. Uh, uh, so, when you look at it, when you confer that enormous power on one authority, just like when people say that the Nigerian president is too powerful, the CGN is as that powerful too, because all the institutions under the umbrella of the judiciary is the head of all at the same time. And the power conferred on the moon did not create concurrence, like concurrence in terms of uh, maybe being oversight by a separate body, just like the president of the federation is being oversight by the National Assembly and the concurrence of the, uh, uh, the House of Assemblies of the States. Here, the CJM is like an outer of the judiciary. It wins enormous power. That is why it is very easy for you to find a CGL uh, that uh, may decide to abuse power, even when the intent is not there to do it. Because power corrupt and absolute power corrupt absolutely. These powers are enormous, they are too much. It's even the head of the line benchers, the head of every team judiciary, the precise provides uh, and all that. Ba Barista, I'm, yes. th I'm thinking uh, retired Justice Datijo was on the bench for more than three decades. And all this um, constitutional or hierarchical perfidy were, were in place. And this same Justice Datijo retired was one of those inclusive of the incumbent CJN. He was one of those who against the tradition of the bench, especially the senior bench, was one of those who wrote a letter of protestation against the immediate past uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria. So, upon all these observations, Having noted all these observations, it took him uh, only the courage of character at his valedictory session to mouth it. 
Doesn't that seem a bit strange? Well, this is not the first time uh, that issue has been raised. The issue of uh, the administration of the judiciary, like you said, one of those who voiced out when the former CGM was abusing the authority of the office in terms of the press and in terms of the hours within which um, uh, judges are supposed to have electricity to carry out their function and all that. Uh, the the seeming maladministration that characterized that area the worst out at that at that time. And now upon retirement, this is a suggestion that is being made that what we've had all this while is a situation where without only one person superintends and oversee the entire judicial firmament and the heads all the institutions and besides the one meetings and all the sub institutions within the judicial circle and that there is a need for us to create you know certain breakdown of power so that power can not be concentrated just on one person yeah it is right to say that uh, uh, this was not made public while in office but upon retirement, the, the, the flexibility and then the, the courage to speak is higher at this level as against when... Okay, uh, okay, 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 by instance, uh, uh, by, by, by Felix, say that uh, it doesn't seem like one is trying to, one is trying to portray uh, uh, Justice uh, Muhammad Datijo are retired as being cowardly uh but that's not my my but let's even look further beyond at least he ultimately mustered the courage of character to mouth it at his valedictory session then one one ordinarily would want to ask what is the usefulness of the mba at this juncture because uh if you really look at it apart from Apart from the Ministry of Justice that is not aided by the CJN, uh, the MBA too is not aided by the CJN. And yet, all these, uh, all these untoward structural, uh, structural defects have been there all this while that even some of us who are not lawyers have had occasions to speak to it. And yet, it does seem that the MBA is just playing by and by with it. The, the power to discipline judges or to make a contribution as to how judges will administer the dispensation of justice is not within the jurisdiction of the MBA to so do. The disciplinary committee of the MBA is structurally meant, meant to discipline lawyers. Uh, lawyers I, I, I never, the I, 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 I never meant lawyers are the, Hello Barista, I never meant the power to discipline, but the power to recommend reforms, to recommend structural realignment. Because ordinarily, anybody who is just literate, you don't have to be a lawyer. If you look at all the roles and responsibilities concentrated in the office of the CJN and in, an, in a single individual, it is almost inevitable that that person will abuse that office. So, oh. and it was in the context of that fact, why has the MBA not recommended that there be some form of reforms and even write directly to the National Assembly that has the right, the constitutional, that has the constitutional responsibility to legislate amendments that cannot be, that cannot be uh, uh, rubbished by the judiciary. I'm just thinking yeah. about yeah, yeah, the MBA have done that repeatedly over and over again in virtually all the sections of the MBA, including during the MBA conference, including making recommendations as to 
separating the office of the uh, 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 Minister of Justice. That argument and conversation have been ongoing as regards the CJN and the anonymous powers the southern group. It has been there have been recommendations and uh, recommendations, white paper of the white paper on that issue. So this is not new. It is making the news today because it's coming from a justice of the Supreme Court, the former justice of the Supreme Court now. Somebody from the inner branch now stating the fact that it is better we have come to a point where there is a need to uh, take uh, care uh, of this uh, issue. Hello, Barista. Barista, yes. I, I really don't want us to rehash the point any you know uh, uh, any further. I, I'm thinking we should be looking in the direction of solutions or suggestions to reform now. I'm sitting there as a tiro of a sort, somebody who is not as learned as you are, thinking maybe it's about time that not only the MBA, not only even benchers. Uh, not only uh, members of the bench, uh, senior bench from the High Court to the Supreme Court, but even those of us who are journalists. Maybe it's about time we started calling out our legislators to review uh, laws with a view to addressing this structural and hierarchical anomaly of a sort. What do you think? Yes, I think the legislature have, have made a comment to that effect. Yes, the legislature have made a comment to that effect. I read in the news this afternoon where they said they are going to look into the issue in question and look for possible angles of amendment and restructure. So I think the, it is not in the front burner, it is not a topical issue. It has reached the ears of the lawmakers. Our steps are being taken to ensure that we have a better system. In the days where these systems were structured this way, but in the days where uh, people, people were not disused, uh, people had a lot of respect for the rule of law and all that. So uh, today, there is a, a decline of sorts. And that decline is visited on the fact that um, People don't have this power much more to do than it was in the past. And the, the level of consciousness today has also increased. Understanding has increased. And the people are now putting more pressure on the fact that we have to achieve good governance at every level, whether judicial, legislature, or executive. So it's, it's a wind, a wind that is blowing through to the right direction to ensure that every area of governance. It's well taken care of. I mean, uh, there is no way, no matter how good the person will be, if he's bestowed with such kind of powers at every corner, every institution, on everybody, every, I don't know, there is a tendency that the person will abuse such powers. Even when the intention to do is not there, it will happen. So, the call is a good one. Uh, coming, coming from a, a senior judge, we are also deep in the conversation. We are discussing it today. The National Assembly uh, is now taking it up. I hope. Uh, civil society organizations are also hope, taking it up. And I hope, we are pushing it to a level of conclusion. I hope civil society, uh, MBA, and those of us who are in the uh, Chatarati circuitry, I hope we will also add to the structural reforms the need to review the methodology through which uh, superior uh, superior uh, officers of the judiciary are appointed in Nigeria. Uh, because the, it smacks of, it reeks of, I really want to be very circumspect in my use of language, but uh, the methodology through which judges are, are nominated for ultimate appointment by the NJC reeks of a very unsavory. What do you think about that? Yes, we have a, a very uh, difficult system to analyze because these days um, 
people get such appointment on the basis of nepotism, sometimes on the basis of connections, no longer on the basis of knowledge and passion for the job. Little wonder uh, um, there's a decline in, in that sector because today you find that uh, the current uh, CJ is somewhere among those that are just uh, inducted. And many other judges who have their sons and daughters, uh, uh, the former justice, Mary uh, Julie, uh, have two of her daughters inducted at the Federal High Court. Well, some other justices, retired and serving, have their children already, you know, inducted or preparing their children to do so. Yes, but you know, whether the children, the child or the daughter of any of them have the passion for that job or not. It is now being used as a case of employment and survival. And when we take that very no, sensitive uh, sector of it, our it economy, is now, it is now, of government, it is now and place it on the altar of survival, there's a tendency that we are going to have further abuse. It is now seemingly looking like a dynastic. Uh, a dynastic appointment. I know of course. Parent passes we are to, not having, yes. Parent passes to, uh, to children. I really want to thank you for uh, gracing uh, the show today. Thank you for the illumination of your perspective. Uh, we wish, we look forward to seeing you um, much more, not so distant future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Today's throwback, the Ways Committee, officially known as the topic actually is reconciling, reconciling the Ways Committee with the 2023 elections. So, the Ways Committee, officially known as the Electoral Reform Committee, was established by late President Umaya Adua in 2007 following the general elections that raised concerns about the integrity of the electoral process. The committee was tasked with investigating the issues around the controversial elections and making recommendations for electoral reforms to ensure free, fair and credible elections. It was led by a respected jurist the retired Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Muhammad Ways. The committee consisted of diverse members from legal, academic, and civil society sectors. After an extensive review and consultation process, the committee presented its report and recommendations in August 2008. The recommendations put forth by the Ways Committee aimed to address key challenges faced during the 2007 presidential elections and improved the overall electoral system in Nigeria. Some of the notable recommendations included 1. Independent Electoral Commission, INEC reforms. The committee recommended restructuring the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to announce its independence, neutrality and effectiveness. This included transparent and non-partisan appointments of INEC officials ensuring adequate funding for the commission and strengthening its capacity to conduct credible elections. This is yet to be effected. The president, who is himself a partisan, still appoints INEX chair and commissioners. Very ironic. Electoral offenses and tribunal reforms. The committee proposed the establishment of specialized electoral offenses courts and the Electoral Offenses Commission to undo and prosecute electoral malpractices swiftly. This has not been implemented. It also suggested reforms to the election tribunals to expedite the resolution of election-related disputes. Relative to the years it took for elections, litigations then, litigations are now time-bound. Atiku and Peter Obi lost their appeals based on the time bound nature of electoral litigation. Political party reforms. The committee recommended measures to promote internal democracy within political parties, including guidelines for party primaries, transparent selection, uh, 
selection processes and mechanisms to ensure party discipline. It also called for strict regulations on campaign for financing and transparency in party funding. The politicians are still the weakest link in the integrity chain of our polity or our electioneering. Voter res registration and education. The committee recommended the adoption of a comprehensive and reliable system for voter registration with the use of biometric technology to improve the accuracy and credibility of the voter roll. Adoption of technology has really reduced, if not totally cleansed, our elections of fictitious voters. Michael Jackson, MCM, ITC have stopped coming to vote in Nigeria. It also stressed the importance of voter and public awareness campaigns to promote active citizen participation in the electoral process. The subsisting voters' apathy is still speaking to this as yet to be met. Electoral security. The committee suggested measures to enhance electoral security by strengthening the collaboration between security agencies, improving training for electoral personnel, and deploying adequate security during elections to prevent violence and intimidation. In as much as there are relative improvements to the security scenario of the do or die elections of 20, of 2007, uh, of 2007, the politicians are still exploiting the financial, material and intellectual poverty of the rack and file of our securocracy in complicity with their goons to disrupt elections in some few instances. These recommendations aimed to address the shortcomings of the 2007 Nigerian presidential elections and build a stronger and more inclusive electoral system in the country. While not all recommendations were implemented immediately, the Ways Committee report has served as a crucial standard for the post-2007 electoral reforms contributing to major improvements in the conduct of elections and the consolidation of democracy in Nigeria. And that's it on the show for tonight. I am Bola Oba. Have a 